do it the same way. So feel free to jump in and ask questions. So we're gonna get through this. But we know that a lot of times we'll go through statistics as well about finances and the marriage. And you see right now that all these separate categories are separate. And so we want to make sure that we put these pieces of finances together. And so, as Pastor was talking about earlier, you have all these different pieces in our marriage. And if finances is one, you know, the old people used to say, I'm from the music city, but the old song used to say, there's no way romance without finance. Come on. And so, and so, Ain't nothing going on. <laughs> but the rent. It's a little bit cold Come at night time. Yeah, you know, if the light's off and you didn't cut them off, and then you try to go and struggle. So, so, all right, so. Or you can't, you know, you're trying to warn your wife some uh, some bath water. Okay, baby, I'm going to give you some bubble bath. You cut the water on, the water don't cut on. <laughs> so, so, you know, you're trying to be romantic, and the lights off, the water off, or the wife don't know what's going to happen. She don't know if she's going to be able to retire. She don't know if she got enough in the bank. Uh, and so that's one thing, uh, one that is preached in Nashville, but it's taught by my father and my grandfather. Son... And, and sons of the gospel take care of your family. Mm -hmm. So your wife has that level of security. And so now you see the pieces are apart. So when you see finances, you should see them uh, as different parts, but they all come together. They're going to work together. We're going to walk our way through. So you see saving. Well, first we start with short term. Short term, we're going to go through that, our day to day, month to month, year to year. Savings are, of course, savings, three, one month, three months, a year. Uh, then you have investments, then you get a little bit deeper when your money starts to work for you, uh, and then of course retirement. So when you get to that, uh, the golden years of your life, you'll be able to take vacation, you'll be able to have uh, a pension, a social security, a 401k or 403b, and we'll talk about all that as well. So I'll turn it back over to my wife who's going to take us through the short term and then we'll kind of just bounce back and forth. Okay. All right, our first question, uh, we're both I'm trying to accept him as a teacher now, so we're both teachers. <laughs> I was getting mad because we're like, I'm a teacher, you're not a teacher. Okay, but um, so we're both teachers, so we wanted to make sure that we include you all into this. So my first question, and let me just say, if you don't want to be honest, if you don't want to share, you don't have to, but we would like for you to share. So our first question of today is, have you ever hidden a big purchase from your spouse? Yes. I can start, I already told you, I have. Anybody else gonna be honest? Come on, be honest. Okay, oh, that's a, I forgot we in Detroit and I know that y'all like to spend money on stuff. I'll say, yeah, 500 and more. Anybody spend 500 dollars more? Okay, you know, some people like, I won't do that. A big purchase doesn't even, it depends on your household, 100 dollars or more. That could be big. So have you hit it? If you went bought some for 100 dollars or more, raise your head without talking to your spouse. And you hit it. I'm not gonna lie, like when I was in this school and I had that uh, financial aid, I used to, cause I had that little credit card, that financial aid, I used to buy stuff and hide it in the bed. Like, like, I mean, he had the nerve to find it. Okay, now, next question is, which is worse, financial or sexual infidelity? What do y'all think, which one is worse? Sexual. That's a tough one? Would you rather be cheated on sexually or cheated on? Financially. Financially. Oh, I'm hearing the wrong financial. So y'all rather take the... <laughs> Both needs to be broken pieces. Let me throw this out. Okay, but would you be, would you be just as hurt if you go and you find your spouse, you go and just, you're looking, and you look in a sock drawer, and you find another bank account that got $10,000. And you didn't know anything about it. $10,000. This person been stacking for like five years. Would you be happy or would you be upset? Would you be happy? Think about it. 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 Think Oh, you cool. okay, so you wouldn't care. You'd be like, oh, you've been doing this for five years. Oh, you're so lucky. Oh, God, you know I Okay. I can't see them shears. I can't fix it. 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 I can't fix
The purpose behind hiding it. Okay, well, I guess I need to get to in marriage. Should we keep secrets then? Okay. No matter how no, deep the secret, I mean, if that's the case, then. So, okay, so, okay, they're saying the protection against the other spouse. The other spouse may not know how to say, and if I don't do this, then we may not have saviors later on. Amen. Like that. Amen. Yeah. I said that. Somebody said, okay, you got a question? Or comment? And you know what? But I say uh, it all depends on how that woman was raised too and brought up. Because she might be the better saver, and the husband might be the spender. Right. Yeah. So it, uh, oh, we got some more comments. Okay. Let me get this couple, and then we come to the back. But at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's like the school children's fault. They I have this, but I have their name on where they have access to it. Mm -hmm. So why would you hide it? That's like the exit plan to me. Oh, now you know what? I'm not gonna lie. My grandmother, my mom's mom taught me that. Well, maybe you always had you little something. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, I'm serious. My mom taught me that. that. She's like, because if you don't ever want to act right, you got enough money to get up and do what you got to do. Man, my dad told me that. My dad said, I was like, yeah. my grandmother yeah. always said. Yeah. Always had you little something. My dad shook his head. Only did teach me that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And so I always had me like a little stash. Okay, in the back. No, no matter what, deceive is deceive. Ooh. Because when you tell them whether you uh keeping it for whatever reason and they don't know, that's deceived. Right? Yeah. That's being deceitful. You know, how, you know, um, no, because when you come together, you're coming together as one. Ooh, she got deep. So which one still is worse? We got one more, then we move on. The sequence. Which one is worse? Okay, I'll say that. Which one is worse? She said, it's a true or financial. Okay, so, 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 on the first one, which one is worse? Can I give a comment from Periscope? Someone said that it's always good to have a backup plan for a rainy day. Okay, all right. What did I think about backup plan? Okay. Okay. So we throw it out. Okay. I'm glad we have Periscope on as well. So we're gonna throw this question out. For the first question, that said, have you ever had to hit the pur purchase or anything like that? Who do you think is the biggest culprit of this, men or oh, women? Which one y'all think? Okay. Let me see the hands of those men. that think it is, is men. Don't raise your hand for men. You think men do it more? Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, small number. Who thinks women are the biggest culprit of this? Ooh. All right. Okay, the statistics say, uh, uh, well, yeah, there's another one on here, but it's actually men that are the biggest That's what I was going to say, men. Yeah. Spending, men. overspending on big purchases. Bigger, like yeah. Like Cars. Yeah. 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 It's three men in the house. Like, I'm not supposed to keep going to the grocery store. They keep eating the food. But, I'm serious. Like, like it's, I'm the only girl in the house. But, he has no problem thinking about going and... <laughs> he has no problem thinking about going to buy something that's $500. Like, and I saw these nice speakers. Yeah. They're $500. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? This should say no No Maybe hundred dollars, but a guy will go be, be making plans to buy a boat, go yeah. buy a car. Uh -huh. At that point, I'm serious. Buy a computer system, a speaker system. We got every gadget in our house because of them. You know, all that. They call me. Yeah, every time they want a new gadget, they call me and you got. I can run into them. Oh yeah, we get some.
Yeah, so, so in this statistic, it's 20% of couples struggle with this. So you have one in five, one in five couples are making these kind of purchases. And so the other couple, I mean the other person in that relationship finds out. So when the other person finds out, guess what? They're upset. Yeah. So if mm -hmm. you're putting $500 out here and there, that's draining from the budget. And we'll talk about a budget here in just a second. And then you tab, and here it is. 26% of men have spent more than $500 without notifying their significant versus just 14% of women. So that's almost double men doing this versus women. Mm -hmm. uh, men? It's true. That's a little bit rough on the front. Uh, and then approximately 7.2 million Americans uh, have hidden bank accounts uh, uh, from their spouses. Uh, and so that's either a credit card account, a banking account, a savings account. And so that's 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 a little bit rough because then again that gets into financial infidelity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Pastor talks about emotional affairs, and Mother D always talks about emotional affairs to mm -hmm. the system, mm -hmm. and then we have financial affairs. Right. And those are just as powerful mm -hmm. than, uh, as, you know, when you get into sexual affairs, because that's hard to break. If mm -hmm. you have gambling addictions or whatever the addictions are, and you're feeding the vice with the money, and then your, your other spouse is going through the bank account. I don't understand how we can't pay the bills. I don't understand why we can't put our kids in private school. I don't understand why we can't do this. But somebody else is slowly stashing money it. away and the money going to other places. Like, I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. It's because you're hiding. Mm -hmm. And then when the other spouse find out, then you're going, well, then you're breaking up. Then you have issues. And so mm -hmm. that's part of it. So we wanted to show some of these stats because this is real life. And a lot of times we miss these things, but this is real life. This is what's happening every day. So we'll jump into kind of uh, how to put the first piece into place, and this is the day-to-day -day type thing. All right, so day-to-day, -day, um, and this can be hard for some. It depends on your temperament. Um, setting a budget can be hard for some. And so if one spouse is a little stronger in it, then that other spouse should lead. And the other one, the main thing with a budget is follow through. Okay, you've got to follow through once you set the budget. All right, so set up a budget needs to include like your day to day or monthly or even yearly things. Um, oh, go back. Go back. Okay, so like utilities, groceries, entertainment, child care, health care, and even tithing and offering. offering. And that's one thing too that a lot of times the couples that we miss, we don't budget tithes and offering. I do. Or we budget tithing. But we don't budget the offering, do too, because we got to take care also of the house of God. Amen. All right, so with this, like I said, when we first got married, I did the budget. Um, and then I got so frustrated, I said, you just take it, because he wasn't following the budget that I had. <laughs> so I'm serious. And so for me tonight, because I was trying to do the budget and take care of the household, like far as, you know, the day-to-day -day things and take care of the kids, it got to be overwhelming, so I let him take over that. And I know sometimes people are like, I don't go with the budget. That's it. But it's very important, uh, go to the next thing, that when you look at a budget, it's very good to set up like a weekly and then a monthly and then even a yearly budget. The weekly is like the day. Now, with this, it's almost better. And now we talked about this last night. We did really well where what we did is we took out enough cash um, for each other for that week and we only spent how much cash we had. So we didn't touch the debit cards. We didn't touch the debit cards until the weekend. And that, that was like our little treat. Somehow we got away from them a little bit. And, and, and <laughs> no, as well, and then notice that people do this, they do this in other marketing schemes. So, in casinos, notice in casinos you trade in your cash for chips. Because when you spend it on chips, you don't realize that it's money. And so that's why they give you chips. And so when you chip, oh, well, it's like a toy. You're, you're doing something with it. So when you go, a lot of times, a lot of financial planners tell you to go to cash method. So you take out a certain amount of cash, you think twice about spending something. If you have $100 in cash versus having a debit card that you see no end to. So when you pull out your wallet and you see, okay, I got five $20 bills, and if I spend this, I have three $20 bills. Versus if you have a card that you don't see the end to. So those are little tidbits that you can do that help mentally. Some of this is mental. So if you see I only have this and I got to make this stretch to Friday, little things that you can do to kind of help you uh, kind of work through it. And what he was talking about is called the envelope method. 
Okay, but when it was a little bit, I know it's a little bit different. Um, but the main thing is to um, accountability for each other. So that's why the cash thing may work for you. You basically gotta find out what works best for you all, okay? Because the cash thing may not work as well. But you gotta find find a method that works the best for you all. Um, to be able, because the thing is that you want to be able to save. You don't want to end up living paycheck to paycheck for the rest of your lives, all right? Because at the end of the day, you're gonna be stuck with debt for your children or your grandchildren to have to deal with if you don't do this. All right, we go to the next thing. Okay, you want to talk about the envelope method? Uh, uh, just very briefly, for the envelope <laughs> method as well, a lot of people think that a plan has to be extravagant, that you, for a, a budget, if you're doing a budget, you have to write it all down, and it's, you know, it has to have a T account and all that. It doesn't. A lot of people, what you can do is get the cash out for, if you know you're eating for a month, you know you need X amount of dollars in cash. What you can do is get an envelope, get white envelopes at Walgreens, Dollar General Store, or whatever, and mark on that envelope utilities. One mark tithes, one mark child care. And for those that are just getting started, take the cash for the utilities. If your lights always get cut off or you never have enough for the end of the month for the child care, uh, then uh, make sure that you take that cash and put it in that envelope. And then the tithe, for your tithes, you say, oh man, I feel bad. I don't, you know, you get to the, the first Sunday or the next Sunday, the last Sunday, you never had your tithes, take your tithes, put it in cash, put it in that envelope. So when you look in your Safe or your special drawer, you have all your envelopes lined up. You take your cash and you, you put it in that envelope. Whatever you do, it's in that specific envelope. So then that may help you in your budget because you're putting the right amount of money in that envelope. So that's a very basic way to get started. Question? I have a question. Um, I like that method. Now, what if you don't have a joint account and your own account? We're going to talk about that. His okay. I, I, I like, I like yeah, we're going to talk about his plan. Like um, and also, I was going to say, we also use this method for trips. So we take out enough cash for that trip, and we only spend that cash that we take. Okay, so we don't use the debit card um, while we're on trips. So you know you pay ahead to pay for that trip. And that's all we go to Disney Cruise, because you got to pay ahead and you pay for everything. And then we take a certain amount of cash for us to spend in the Bahamas, and then, but we only use that. So when you come off of the trip, you're not like, oh my God, right. we're so broke. Because it's, it's good to go away, but it's terrible to come away, and then like, oh Lord, we're going to have to like miss out stuff for a couple yeah. months to you know kind of back up, seriously. Um, and I was going to say, we use, um, well, I will come back, because we're going to talk about some other type of savings. Okay. So the, the, the method that, that we have chosen to use, but I, I know there's been you know, some conversations about should you have just one single account? Uh, because, you know, the Bible says you be one flesh, and people say we should only have one account. And then some people are in that they have separate accounts. Like, you know, the husband got his own account, and the woman has one, and they don't have a joint account. Now, what we've elected to do is have a his, hers, and his, hers, and ours. And a lot of people have that. And that has cut down for us a lot of disagreements, a lot of argument. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's arguments because at first we did the one big account at first. And so then we would have to say, well, I want to do this. And they're like, no, I don't want you to do that. So then you walk away mad. And then, oh, he wants to do this. I'm like, no, you don't need to do that. So it's like now having the single, we have the house account, but we also have our separate accounts. And so I put in a certain amount every time I get paid. He puts in a certain amount every time he gets paid. So if I want something just for me, like, I just throw it out. Like, you want some weed. It shouldn't come out of the, not just say, you got the weed, weed. Yeah. 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 Oh, that weed. Yeah. I just said weed. You said weed. Yeah. 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 And yeah, especially, true. you know, yeah, people are not, if you're not married to some way, you can be somebody say too. We gotta keep it real. Yeah, but yeah. addictions can also creep that's in too and cause that's a lot of financial problems. Right, so but I was talking about weed. But I said, if I want some weed, yeah. it shouldn't come out of our household account. Yeah, it should come out of my little silver account that I've been saving to pay for this. Like what do you put in um, that's, that's like a majority of it in ours and then you 
what percentage, how do you yes. see the number? Yeah. yeah, so we came up with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first, you got to sit down with your spouse. Again, it's not a perfect. I can't say everybody should do 20% to their account. You got to talk with your spouse. We elected to do a certain amount. Um, of course, his percentage is a little bit higher because he makes a little bit. So, But I put a certain amount to my account. And then I just let it stack. And then I also was doing it also for our kids. I, I had started their credit union account as well through my account, through my paycheck. So then um, when I was working for Metro Public Schools, a certain percent went to that. So I was taking out different percentages to go into different accounts just out of the money I was getting paid for. So you got to look at that too because you also need to set up these accounts for your children as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we more specific. Okay. Is the majority going into yeah. our yes. Our yes. Account? yes. 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 Yeah, yeah so, at least like eighty percent. Yeah, and we only do small amounts yeah. to our own accounts. To, but but again, mm -hmm. let everyone know uh, that what we are doing as well is she has access to mine, right. and right. and then it's like and, and the statement comes to the house. I don't yes. have no PO box yes. going yeah. to the PO box. <laughs> I'm going to my brother's house. Or nothing like that. <laughs> uh, we got we got a No, I had a um. I do the same thing like for. Charity, LJ, and Alonzo, they didn't had a they had an account as soon as they was born. Right. So I I do fifteen dollars to each child yeah. when I get paid. Yeah. So I'ma tell you it's a lifesaver. Yeah. But in twelve months, yeah. that's right. I it can does. do anything. I was only doing ten dollars. And it's yeah. stacked up to where mm -hmm. they have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. and, and this is and this has been a blessing because what you do is you have separate so like if I wanted to save up to do something then I know I have to take time and let it save up. Yeah. And then if she wants to do, like I said, if she wants to get hair that costs whatever, <laughs> then, then I don't have to, I, uh, I don't have to, we don't have to have that discussion to be like, how much did you pay for this? How much? She'd be like, well, nah, I got it from my account right. and I can get it from my account. But we know all the bills, right. there, is, there is no yeah. lack in the house. Yeah. And then there's something like, and two, if I want to go elaborate, and I know sometimes my wife doesn't like, and, and the way that I show, love to my wife is I like to buy things for her that are expensive and she don't really care for that sometimes but that's the way I do it so I'm like it's I'm, like you know you gotta know you know what's that yeah, we know yeah, what's yeah, yeah. Yeah. your love language yeah, so your love language. love language so yeah. sometimes if I, if I want to go to Tiffany's for my language. wife yes. I'm going to Tiffany and then she may be like, why you going to me? But I'm like, well, I came out of my account. And she's like, okay, well. <laughs> 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 no, because I'm thinking like, oh, we could be using that to go get the carpet clean, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to pass out. You know, I have another question. Hours. Let's say, for example, my wife have her own car and I have my own car. Should that go on ours or should that go on his or her? We put that in ours. So, so that's all like the... The cars, utilities, everything. All the big bills are coming through. Yeah, and we're not putting like a, a whole lot of money in his and hers. So it's, if it hurts, that's like what, like, you can blow them. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Which, like, yeah. Which, like, that made a good point saying that this, yeah. this, his and hers, but you yeah. take out some money for the week. Yeah, like entertainment, like get through the week or coffee. You know, yeah, 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 like you want a bagel? Yeah, something like that, yes. So, yeah. so this is your amount of cash. Go to Starbucks anytime you want to. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, have a Starbucks edition. Yeah. That's where it comes out. But you know what? That can add up. So it's it good you take out yeah. cash. Like, okay, I'm only going to spend fifty dollars this week on Starbucks coffee. That can help you out a lot. Thousand dollars. Yeah, it's expensive. Okay. It's expensive. All right. I don't know. Three coffees. A hundred dollars a week for a Starbucks coffee. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah. 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 Ye
I would suggest not using the 401k as a savings account. That's nope. actually not a good idea. That's, not a good idea. That, idea. That, that's not, you, you use that for long term. Right. Right. This right. is actually right. short term. Right. Yeah. So that's actually two yeah. different yeah. type of savings. Yeah. So that should be used that never been touched. Mm -hmm. So this type of savings actually can be used on an annual basis, three year basis, five year basis, even 10 and 20 years. So we heard about for children, like you have for children, let's say you have a child that's getting ready to go to college. There should be a savings plan for your children. And then there are even plans where you can have uh, the children that you lock in state rates. So if you want a child, you know, that's gonna go to our Wayne State or those state schools, you can lock in rates. But you have to get on that plan to lock in the rate. So like, yes sir. Michigan has a, a college plan Right. 503. That when you put in it, okay, like you say, the rates don't go up. But when the child graduates, regardless how much, they will be fully paid. Oh, that's, that's, right. Good. that's good. That's right. That's right. There, there's, uh, there's quite a few that are like that. So in Tennessee, it's, it's the exact same way. It's actually a federal program that you can lock in rates as their child is like now. Mm -hmm. So like I have a, we have a soon to be seven year old, a soon to be 10 year old. So you lock in the rates for state school. Not only don't work for private institutions, but for state schools. So at, at home, if you do a middle Tennessee State University, a Tennessee State or Austin P, you can start to pay now and you get the rates as of 2016. Now my oldest will be the class of 2024. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so in 2024, the rates may be 25% higher, 30% higher. But you can lock in these rates if you start to pay, come out of the paycheck right now. So is it like, especially if doing it kind of like too late, like her oldest is 13. So it's never too late. Even if they're a junior, go ahead and still, it's, it's better to have some. And, and the beauty of this one, if you, now it does limit where the child goes to school. That's right. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, he going, he going inside a mission. Uh, so, but, but let's say, if you knew your child, you said, okay, my child is going to Michigan State, whatever. So. If the child goes to Michigan State, Michigan State, you don't have to pay the uh, education all the way off. But as you start to paying, then you're locking that rate in, even if they don't pay it off. So you're getting 2016 rate, and let's say they go in even 2018. And let's say the Michigan legislature passed a bill that raises, it, raises it up 10% even next year. You don't pay it. You pay it this rate. So you're locking it in as anything moves. So you. That's the beauty of it. So there's a lot of plans. So then you have your child child planning, you have credit unions, you have Christmas funds. You know a lot of times, and it's a big thing that you get in debt and Christmas. So a lot of times in January, and you know, that's one of the big times for us. Even people committing suicide over financial woes. Because you spend a whole lot of money at Christmas time. So you can plan even through the year and they have these Christmas funds as well. Yes, like crazy. Y'all uh, familiar with the thrift saving plan? Yes, I heard that. Yes, absolutely. So you have, you have, and that's another type of saving plan that you can do. And I have a little bit of information on that as well. I see my time is, is winding up here. Uh, yes. And we'll come back to the hit some of the saving plan. I want to make sure I have enough time to kind of go through all of them. I apologize if we have to rip through this a little yeah. bit. Uh, and like we have here, uh, even for saving plan, you have a household in income of, uh, if let's say if you have $2,000 a month, you should have at least two to $6,000 in liquid assets. And what liquid assets means is how easily can you turn it into cash? So you have an asset, let's say, um, a CD that goes for uh, five years, 10 years. Uh, some of them have severe penalties. And that's the reason why I go back to a 401k is because you will pay a severe tax mm -hmm. penalty yep. if you take that money out. Yep. So you will lose 10 to 25 percent mm -hmm. if you touch that money. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take the tax, uh, if you don't take that tax hit as soon as you take it out, you're gonna take it out at the net end of the next year. Yeah. So if you're under 65, you touch that as a short-term saving plan. You might as well just take 25 percent of whatever you took in, and it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. You might as well just take it up in there and just throw it up because it's gone. So the liquidity of that. Supplemental income. Uh, Excuse me, this um, this the company says um, that she was talking about the, the, as a retirement plan, the four hundred one k. Okay. As a retirement. Okay. Plan. Okay. Absolutely, and we'll get to that as well. That that's another piece of the puzzle is uh, retirement as well that fits that's into that. 
and that fits into the plan as, uh, and the puzzle as well. So in the savings piece of it, if you worry, and many people worry to say, I don't have enough to save. I've heard that quite a few times, and many individuals say, I don't have enough to save. You can always find enough, another way so to save. Balance up your so if you're, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, and many do because we're in an economic, we're, we're, I mean, we're getting better, but we're still in an economic mm -hmm. downturn. Right. Uh, you can do things to solve your income. Yeah. You can cut grass, you can do hair, uh, I know my wife is a star at doing hair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it has become a, like, my, that's my, my little liquid cash that goes in my account. So yeah. me doing somebody here once, two, whatever times a week, that's just my little money. And she bad at it. I see sisters coming out all the time. And, and, and so fix it for her, baby sister. And so even in that as well, uh, even I, I, I supplement my income. The Lord is blessed, but I supplement my income. I teach. And so I teach at Tennessee State University, but I also have another job. And so, you know, I go two days a week, I teach. And so that helps supplement our income. And so that goes to the, one of my his accounts. So if I want a little something to spool, that's what I do. But, uh, and so if I want to, if I want to teach you to build a wall, that's where it comes out of. So, but I wanted to share this scripture in 1 Timothy 5 and 8. And my father is not in the church, uh, not filled with the Holy Ghost, but this is a principle that he even started to teach me. Now, when my grandfather died, we were left with nothing. So, you know, he was, now he did begin, he was the first one in, his, in our family that was able to be buried without having to pass the hat. It's because, you know, in the South too, came from sharecropper. We are descendants of Chicken George. So he was the first one not having to pass the hat so he didn't set my father behind. But my father caught a hold to something. Notice this in 1 Timothy. Uh, well, no, this is not the one I have, but this is a good example of my father as well. But if one not, if any man provide not for his own house, uh, especially for those in his own house, uh, he has denied the faith and is worse, worse than, than an yeah. Worse than an unbelief. Mm -hmm. So when we get up and we, you know, we jump and we shout and we praise the Lord, we but if we not provide for our own house, wow. we're not that's right. We should be leaving money for our children and our grandchildren. Right. That's, a, that's a problem. We are worse than an infant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you know, um, Caucasians have caught on to this for generations and generations. We are just now, as African Americans, catching on to this principle. You know, it's been too many generations that we're leaving. We're leaving something, but it's called debt. And that's what we leave behind. I'm being honest, right? right. Yeah, Somebody amen. died and we got to pay their bills that were left over. Mm -hmm. And so we have, as African Americans, we need to start thinking about what can I, don't think about, I can go buy this TV today. Why don't you save that so your children right. can make some money after you're right. gone. And then your grandchildren. So that's really the one of the main principles we need to bring out today. Right. Oh, and then also something that I learned from my husband and my dad is leaving something for our church. When you die, you should have a certain amount that goes to the church as well. Amen. Amen. Sharing is caring. Uh, put the next point in there too, because now we talk about investing, and you can invest in things. So what better place to invest in? It's the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Of God. Now, now I've learned this lesson from the lineage of gentlemen that has served in the 25, 26 years I've been at True Way, is that invest. He's talking to my dad. <laughs> so here's my Larry Williams speech. <laughs> so invested in the kingdom of God, if you follow the lives of those that have served in the position that I have, you will, I mean, and you invest in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. now, you will get that. the return on yes. the investment. Tell me about it. Yes, 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 the lineage of gentlemen that have yes. served under my pastor, it is yes. mine. Yes. And it's not that, like I said, I, I went to an HBCU, and and I'm not smarter than anybody, but I, the things that I have seen God do would be mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. Now, I've just started getting into investments, and I have to be wise on what God has given me, but I've seen God open doors that will blow your mind. I've had yeah. secret loans. Exactly like, like the word. They said, don't you tell nobody. Yeah. And I'd be yeah. like, okay, well, wait a minute. I'd be like, I just got a loan. And so, you know, I, I'm not at home, so I can be a little bit candid, you know, because somebody might ask me for some money. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, so they give you bonuses well over $25,000, and they got called back and say, uh, a couple months later, hey, Stephen, we want to give you another. And this one is going to be $50,000. Like, Won't he do it? Like, 
Won't he do it? This is not my boss that called me. This is my boss's boss that's called me. Won't he do it? He said, don't tell her. Don't tell anybody. Everybody don't get this. Wow. And so then, well, they gave me 40000 last year. They said, this year, we're going to give you 50000 Guess what? It compounds. Now that is a, this is not an investment, this is not a CD. Come this on. This is not a stock, this is Come not an IRA, this is not a mutual fund. This is an investment. Kingdom. Yeah. Woo! Wee! So, Won't he do it? That return on that investment is a hundred, a thousand fold blessing. And so, mm -hmm. so when you hear all these blessings shall come on you and overtake God. That's, that's the word. No, is yes, word. that's telling you. You know this is not Sunday morning, so yeah. let me get back on this. So, 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 I know. Let me get back on this. So you got mutual funds, IRA, mm -hmm. CDs, I want to roll my time. Insurance, and stock, and education. <laughs> education is an investment. Yes. And so a lot of times people say, I don't want to go back to school. Mm -hmm. But the statistic on this morning when I was uh, uh, MSN says, those that go back to school or go to school or go back to school earn two times as more. much as those or bachelor versus a high school diploma. Yes. It's mm -hmm. two times more. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we say, I understand. Definitely I understand it's growth. But the invest the return on the investment is two times as much. Mm -hmm. So it's a struggle, and you're gonna to have to struggle to do it, but there is a return on yes, the Yes, yes. And see, all of this takes uh, sometimes blood, sweat, and tears, but we can yes. do so much more for the kingdom of God when yes. we have more money in our pockets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we, it's, it's a difference coming to church with a dollar and being able to come to church with a hundred dollars. Yes, in your Lord. So if you invest in yourself by like bettering yourself, you're gonna be able to do a lot more for the kingdom of yes, God. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we very briefly talk about risk and reward. So when you talk about that, when you when you hear uh, there's a lot of shysters out there and gamers out there that's gonna try to say, if you give me X amount of dollars, I'll give you this. Yeah. If somebody says, give me this, there is gonna be usually high risk. So high risk, you get a high reward. Low risk, you usually get low reward. So uh, the things may be safer. So you have like, uh, well, it used to be, everybody always used GM as a as a gold standard. Like, you buy GM stock, you may have a lower return on an investment, but you know that you're going to get your money back. So it's like buying a government bond. Just make sure that whatever you invest in, you do a lot of research in the company first before you actually choose that company. That's right. So so you have to do your research. And if you don't understand, ask someone that does understand. Mm -hmm. Like, there's certain stocks and certain things that I don't even get. So I have a financial investor as well so and if i understand if i don't understand uh, a certain money market or if i'm getting into a new market i ask my investor i say i don't understand this market somebody because certain people specialize in certain markets certain people specialize in acquisitions certain people specialize in the bond market some people are in the stock market but notice the things that are at the, the, the high money market and government bonds type things are going to be on the lower end so you have low risk. You know, it's gonna be safe, a government bond, government ain't going nowhere. Uh, Let's Trump end, get in. No, but you're only gonna probably yield about 2%, 3% return. The higher you go up uh, in a, uh, a stock, so let's say um, I'm invested in some company we were looking, I was showing Deacon Webb last night, there's a company that had translation service. You put a piece in here, it starts to translate. Now that's a higher risk, you don't, they don't have clients yet. But if they do make it big, you're gonna have a higher reward, like stock market. The stock market is risky. It can be up today, uh, now the tomorrow. Elected, it goes super yep. straight down. Or you have Black Tuesday or whatever happens, it can be up, it can be down. So high risk, high reward. And that goes with mutual funds too. Remember when we first got married, I had that mutual fund. Um, and then when Clinton got out of office, it started. I started losing money on that mutual fund. Um, so that's one thing too, you gotta kinda of pay attention to what's going on in the government because that's gonna play a big role into what's happening into you know your investment. That's right. And if you go I notice they say next month that eventually the interest rate will go up. Mm -hmm. And the interest rate going up and the stocks will be coming down. Mm -hmm. Now the interest rate has been down to practically nothing for the last what, five or six years. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, at the last meeting, 
they're saying going up at least a quarter percent. Mm -hmm. But the stock market has dropped just by them saying it and it has happened. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is based on announcements and speculations and always the market now is going to react and then probably in what is it, in December, no, November, November, December, as soon as we decide who the president is, yeah. it's going to react. And so if you're going to put your money in the market, and I know we all saved it here, but you have to pay attention. Yeah. Because you can't put your money here and then say, well, I'm too saved to watch MSNBC, <laughs> or I can't watch yeah. CNN. Yeah. You're going to have to pay attention because right. that's where your money is. Real quick, too, we, we got to also think about risk. Um, if you want to be a leader, you're going to have to take some risk. And I'm not saying blowing all your money, but you got to think about the many men that become famous and billionaires, and they actually went bankrupt three, four, even seven times. Yeah. You know, so you got to, I'm not saying that y'all put all your money and go bankrupt, but you got to be willing, you know, I'm not saying that. But we also got to look at, you know, if it is a risk, um, if you do your research, it's okay maybe step out there. Maybe, maybe you want to start off small. Um, and then let it build up. But like Trump, like we talking about him, he he went bankrupt several times. Macy's bankrupt several times. The uh, the person came over Hershey bankrupt several times. So we also got to look at. Sometimes we got to be willing to step out there and be willing to take that risk. Because I think you like Jackson's. I think do you have to do real estate? Real estate will be a prime market here in Detroit because it's so much real estate that can be taken over. Especially like even just on Seven Mile. And so, uh, and so we'll run through this one real quick, but just to say uh, that this one says, in this one it has, for even investments, that two-thirds of married men say they make the investment decisions on their own, uh, and only 13% of married women agree that the man made the decision. Uh, and then this other survey said four out of ten say they make their the retirement decision together. So what this is saying is the men think they're making a decision, and, really and only 13 people, and most of the women say he ain't really making a decision. So they don't know what's going on. So, and Amos it says, can two walk together except, except they, agree. they agree? So a lot of times we think, and a lot of times my wife do it too. That's right. And I think I'm making some big decision. I'm like, hey, I just made that decision. She's like, you ain't making no decision. So, <laughs> so we have to talk, we have to communicate. We go through the next one. Uh, and so the, the final one is retirement. And, uh, and, 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 so, and so as well, and so just like the, the, the last individual said is that retirement kind of makes up all of it. So then you have your 401k, your pension, your social security. And we know now that uh, pension is going away for a lot of people. It doesn't even exist no, no more in corporate America. Yes. Uh, we know that social security, question. My pension behind uh, Detroit going to bankruptcy, they took 28% of my pension. I'm a retired city. I lost 20 Eight percent. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and see, that is rough. But see, I mean, but even in this, even locally in Tennessee, you would be considered still blessed because a lot of people oh, that that in there, a lot of people pensions that they cut. I think with the Metro well, Transit Authority, that's gone. What we didn't know is that only the police department and the fire department and the police department and the fire department pensions was insured by the federal government. Oh. Other city workers were insured by the state. And by the time the bankruptcy started, the last month, the premium hadn't been paid for the other workers, and it collapsed. Mm -hmm. And then I know that certain cities like Detroit, you, know, you guys have been hit hard, yes. you know, financially in a lot of areas. So, um, but the thing is, like, sometimes if you look at, maybe if you had a supplemental income, it kind of balance out, especially if you know that if you're in a city, it's going to downward as far as like financially, it might be okay, even if you are at the age of retirement, to look at something like a supplemental income to kind of help you. Is it, just, just a thought, that you're from Tennessee, mm -hmm. would it be wise for me to invest in something in Tennessee? It well, depends on, I, I say it depends on yeah, and, and just knowing the market as well. So so definitely just knowing the market and have somebody that's, if you're going into a different market, just having anybody that knows that market intimately. But like, something like, if you say you did, just throwing it out, like Nashville is like up and rising with building. So that could be something, but yeah, like you said, I would definitely have a financial planner to kind of help me with that, especially being in a different state.
Um, anything else? And I know like the teachers, we get pensions and different things. I think we kind of talked about it. Anybody have any questions about anything with retirement? This is very important because you don't want to get to a certain age and after you're done working and then you have to live on that fixed income. And sometimes it depends. Some fixed incomes are just $600, $700 a month. And that's all you have to live on every month. Yeah. Uh, what is rough? Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so we, we had the question about Roth, and that's actually as well that can go in uh, to investments as well. So if you have a Roth IRA, it does, it's another type of vehicle that you can use as far as savings, and well not savings, really more so an investment. Because in an investment, you're looking for how my money starts to work for me. And so like Bishop was talking about, you have your IRAs, and so thought that's one, and then again, it depending on the risk, you'll see what the, uh, what your interest rate is. So a Roth is pretty safe. Uh, but then if, you're, if your income goes to a certain level, you may top out of a, a Roth. So, so it works if you're uh, at a certain income level. Uh, and so that's an excellent vehicle as well. Uh, certificate of deposit, you may hear it as a CD. Roth IRA, all these are excellent too. But they are also market driven. So you're locked into a certain period. But then you may hear, you may hear advertising that the uh, percentages are going up, percentages are going down, so they're market driven, but they're much safer than stocks and bonds. Um, this is not really dealing with the same thing as life insurance, but what should somebody do if they're at the age of retirement and they're on a fixed income? Should they start pulling out their life insurance? So, pulling out uh, of insurance? Okay, so, so there's different types of insurance as well. So, I used to work in the insurance industry as well. So, uh, and, I, and that's one of the things too, another principle that my father taught me as well, let me take it to the next slide, uh, is that we should always be prepared for uh, this life and the life to follow. Uh, and so, uh, insurance can actually be a little bit of all of it. It can be uh, for this life because you have a whole life policy, and a whole life policy is different from a term policy. Mm -hmm. So a whole life policy, is a little bit more robust. It'll cost a little bit more, but it builds cash value. So what it is, is I, uh, when I first started working, I was about 22 years old, I, I took a job with American General Life and Accident. And so I started with this policy because I was young, healthy, I wasn't as heavy as I was this. Uh, and, and so I got a policy, I was in excellent health. Uh, and so I got $100,000 worth of life insurance. And so when we, got married, I think at that time it had a cash value roughly about $5,000. So if you needed to put a down payment on a home, there was $5,000 that kind of worked as a saving. Now, you know, had the Lord taken me and I died at that point and we were married, she would have then had, if I took it out of my cash value, she would have got $95,000 versus $100,000. Mm -hmm. So essentially you're taking a loan from yourself and I'm not paying the bank any interest. I'm paying interest to myself. Mm -hmm. So there's so many little nuances out there. Now, term uh, insurance is strictly for my children and my children's children and my spouse. So, and and also for, and like, and like my wife was alluding to as well, also for my church. Have you ever wondered how some of these small churches have, I mean, beautiful facilities, but they're years and years old, especially our counterparts that are the majority. Uh, and so, so you get a term policy, I mean, relatively cheap. You know, yeah. my father showed me that you can get a million, I had at 30 a million dollar policy, and I was paying like $25 20 a month. About, yeah. And so, but in that, I'm providing now, not for just my children, I'm providing for my children's children. And so, Proverbs 13 and 22, and that's something that my father taught me as well that a good man leaving an inheritance to his children's children. So now I'm building wealth. So I'm not living day to day, and I'm not leaving for just my children. Now I'm building wealth for my children's children. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so also, in this, I know that I may not be able to give the ministry, the church, $100,000 right off. But I told the Lord even then, I said, now, I want to give you now, we've been commissioned to give tithes and offer, but I may not be able to give uh, the Lord in living $100,000, but as I leave this earth, 
the last thing I want to do is I want to leave uh, a tenth of my insurance policy. So I have a few policies. So now, when the Lord takes me, $100,000 go to Trueway. So what could Trueway do with $100,000? A whole lot. What could, what could 100 members, what could 100 members and $100,000 do for Trueway? That's a million dollars. Yes. So now, we got a million dollars. That's another generation now having a million dollars that they didn't have to raise, they didn't have to earn. So again, yeah. so now no for chicken the kingdom. Dinner. For the so kingdom. Now look, now look what we're leaving to our children's children. Not for them to buy a car with, not for them now to do all these other things with. Now we are invested to the kingdom. Now we're doing kingdom work now. Amen. Now we're we're talking now what they say we're cooking with gas now. Now we're doing some real work. So now there's so many things that we can do. Not just for us, but we're doing it for the Lord as well. Lord. And I know my kids, can live, my grandkids and kids can live off $900,000. And that's just, man, that's just one policy. But then if I can't buy another TV to fill up this wall and I got to pay, and I can pay for other things, then I do that. Uh, and just very briefly, um, last piece. Uh, uh, this kind of goes into uh, 401k, but all of this as well. And we talked about investment. If you have an investment tool, and I had this question actually come from somebody that uh, my client from TenCare. And he's like, hey, Stephen, I know you, you know, he said you, you teach at Tennessee State, you're an account wrestler. Yeah. So he said, I'm putting in my 401k. How, do I, uh, how long does it take your money to double? So, rule of 72. Uh, it's not so hard, it kind of sounds hard at first. So if you had start at 10%, if you get a 10% return and it drops down by years, and I can send this website at all as well. So if you invest any amount of money at 10%, it takes 7.2 years for that money to double. So only seven years for it to double. And so if you mind clicking for it one more time. Okay. So at year one, if you had $1,000, in $1,000 at a 10% return, you get $100 return. In the first year, you get $1,100. So, and excuse it because I took out, I wanted to take out decimal points and all that. So in the seventh year, you're at uh, 1,948. And then again, if you did another 2.4 months, it'll be $2,000 to the penny. So, uh, if you want to, if you want to, there's so many tools that I have out there. There's a place called, you want to jot this down, bankrate.com, and it's just like it sounds, B-A-N-K-R-A-T-E, bankrate.com, has every calculator you can think of. If you want to learn how to, how much it'll take for you to pay down debt, pay off a mortgage, uh, the amateurization rate for a car, for uh, investments, Every calculator you can possibly think of is on bankrate.com. Bankrate and it'll do investments, it'll do absolutely anything. And then uh, if you need me as well, just feel free to, to call uh, myself and I don't mind going through as well. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta check my wife first before I get the number. Six one five. Six four two eight zero seven one. Yes, sir. So I do have an investment in Tennessee. You do. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see everybody because we definitely want Silas Temple. Because if if our if your church is doing well, our church is doing well. So we definitely want y'all to be making a lot of money and saving up because we gonna get it too. My father thank you true way. So yes. Uh, anything else that anybody wants to say? Questions, comments, concerns? We'll wrap it up. Was this boring? Oh,